Respiratory Viral Screening and Identification Monoclonal Antibodies, the complete solution for respiratory virus testing. Based on a direct immunofluorescence method using monoclonal antibodies, this kit provides a rapid, sensitive, and specific detection of the seven major viruses causing respiratory infections. Adenovirus, Influenza A, Influenza B, Parainfluenza 1, 2, and 3, and RSV. The kit contains all the necessary reagents to perform the technique. A 10 milliliter dropper vial containing a blend of FITC labeled monoclonal antibodies against seven respiratory viruses. An individual 2 milliliter droppers of FITC labeled monoclonal antibodies specific for each of the viruses. The kit also includes mounting medium, PBS, cover slips, and screening, identification, and control slides. In order to perform the analysis, you will need adequate precision micropipettes, centrifuge with swinging rotor giving at least 1500 Gs, thermostaticized incubator, deionized water, vortex, shaker, acetone, humid chamber, and a fluorescence microscope and suitable filters. The PBS should be prepared for use by reconstituting it in 1.5 liters of distilled water. Make sure it is properly mixed to reach the optimal concentration. The rest of the reagents are ready to use. To carry out this technique, respiratory samples are analyzed directly, though cell culture can also be used. This video shows how to analyze direct samples. For swab specimens, we need to add an extra step in the initial sample processing. As the cells will be attached to the swab, we need to vortex the tube in order to release the cells. Once the cell shave has been released into the transport medium, we can remove the swab carefully and proceed in the same way as with the rest of the samples. Transfer the sample to a conic centrifuge tube and spin it at 300 to 500 Gs for 10 minutes at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. Remove the supernatant, including the mucus that may surround the cell pellet. Gently tap the tube to release the cells, add PBS and resuspend them, pipetting carefully. Repeat the centrifugation step. Remove the supernatant. Tap the tube and add enough PBS to obtain an opalescent cell suspension. Dispense 25 microliters of the suspension in one well of the screening slide. If the sample doesn't fully cover the well, use the end of the pipette tip to spread it around the well. At this point, you can check in the visible light microscope to make sure that the cell concentration is adequate. Let the slide air dry at room temperature or use a hair dryer to accelerate the process. Fix the cells by introducing the slide in an acetone bath for 10 minutes at room temperature. Take the slide out of the acetone bath and let it dry completely at room temperature. Now the slide is ready to be stained using the monoclonal antibodies. Add one drop of Vercel viral screening reagent to each well of the screening slide. Remember that in these slides, you can analyze up to five samples at a time. Tap the slides to spread the screening mixture or use the end of the pipette tip. Make sure that the reagent covers the entire cell coated area. Incubate at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes in a humid chamber. To make the humid chamber, Simply place filter paper inside a container with a cover, then dampen the filter paper with water. After the incubation period, rinse the slide briefly with PBS. Avoid pouring PBS directly over the wells. Then submerge the slide in PBS for 10 minutes 
applying a gentle shaking motion. After that, rinse slightly with deionized water to remove the salts, which will increase the background. Finally, air dry the slide completely at room temperature or use a hair dryer to accelerate the process. Apply the Versal mounting medium onto the slide and place a cover slip on top of it. Press gently to remove any bubbles. Now it is ready to be observed using a fluorescence microscope at 400 times magnification. Positive results should be further investigated. Dispense the sample in the virus identification slide and add one drop from each of the specific FITC labeled monoclonal antibody bottles to each well. Make sure that the reagent covers the entire cell coated area. Continue with the same protocol described earlier, incubation, washing, addition of mounting medium, and microscope visualization. Positive and negative controls should be included to test the correct performance each time a new kit is opened, as it allows for the validation of the assay and the kit. These slides have already been coated with the antigen and fixed. The staining process is the same as in the identification slides. A positive sample is one in which two or more intact cells display a characteristic apple green fluorescence pattern. A negative sample is one in which an appropriate number of intact cells all display minimum fluorescence or absence of fluorescence. Those samples with weak staining and or a single positive cell should be considered uncertain. An invalid sample is one which presents a strong background staining or does not have enough intact cells. 